When you use the trigger action when a HTTP request is received, anyone with the URL can execute that flow if the who can trigger the flow is set to anyone. And that might be okay. But what about if you want to restrict it via IP address? Well, you can do that with a trigger condition. This flow um, just pulls out some information and displays it in a HTML page back to the calling client. So let's take a very quick look at what Power Automate gives you. We have the IP address of the calling client with the port it requested the data from, the IP address on its own, which is gathered by an expression, the user agent, and the platform. These two are not useful for restricting it by IP, obviously, but you might want to use them for something else. So let's now take a look at the expressions and the trigger expressions, and then I'll demonstrate blocking the page from an unauthorized IP. So the expressions then, um, this trigger outputs headers client IP. This is this, which isn't useful to us because the second part is dynamic. So we can use a split expression to split it on a colon and use the first expression to get the first half of that, which will be just the IP address. We can also get the user agent using the same syntax, but with user agent and the platform using this. So how do we turn this into a trigger expression? So this one here will match a single authorized IP address, which is my current IP address. If we um, change this trigger expression, I won't be able to reach the page at all. So we'll do that in a moment. Let's have a look at one more expression. This one where it says contains, and then it's got JSON. We've built here a JSON array of IP addresses which can access the page. Um, and then we use the first split again in order to get the IP address to compare it to. So let's go and have a look at how to actually put the trigger condition in. So if we go to settings, here is the trigger condition. You have to put this at symbol at the beginning of the expression, and then you can just put the IP address. So if I change that now to an IP address, which I am not using, and now we go back and look at my run history. Okay, so it hasn't been run for three minutes. And if I refresh this page now, I get no response at all. And my run history hasn't changed. If I edit the flow and change this back to my actual IP address and save that, now I go back to the run history. It still hasn't been run. If I go over here and refresh the page, you can see that it has executed. So that is all really useful and it's a nice addition. I believe this is new because I've tried to do this before and it hasn't been available. But a word of warning, I have seen instances where I've tried to use this in the past couple of days and it is telling me that the client IP doesn't exist. So this is obviously a feature that's rolling out but it's very easy to do and it's a nice way of securing the flow without having to use authentication if you've got trusted IPs that you want to execute a flow from. And that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll do my best to get back to you. See you in the next video. Bye bye.